Let me tell you a story. Thousands of years ago, there existed an interdimensional energy being whose name was spelled D-H-W-T-Y. D-H-W-T-Y. Now, this name came to be written as D-J-E-H-U-T-Y and pronounced as Jehuti. Jehuti. Some people spell it T-E-H-U-T-I and pronounce it Tahuti. Tahuti. And this energy being, this life force, played many roles in ancient pre-dynastic, comedic society and sacred thought. Now, as many of you well know, before it was called Egypt by the Greeks, that land was known as Kemet. K-E-M-E-T. Kemet. K-M-T in ancient times and K-E-M-E-T in our modern times. That's how we spell it now. K-E-M-E-T. But back then it was just K-M-T because they didn't have vowels. And the culture was known as Kemetic and the people were known as Kemetians. So this interdimensional energy being that I'm telling you about, Jehuti, goes all the way back to Kemet. And among other things, Jehuti was known as Master Scribe of the Gods. And he is credited with the invention of pictographic writing, pictographic writing called the Medu Netter, M-E-D-U, Medu, N-E-T-E-R, Netter, the Medu Netter, which translates to words of nature or divine words or words of the supreme being. Some people call this the language of the gods, and they are commonly known to us today as hieroglyphics hieroglyphics all of that imagery and symbology that you see carved into the walls of all those temples throughout what is now called egypt that sacred language we call hieroglyphics was known in the language of the people that wrote them as the meduneta divine words words of nature words of the supreme being now The ancient Kemetians regarded Jehuti as the master of both physical and moral or divine law. And what you see written on those temple walls is ascribed, much of it is ascribed to the wisdom of Jehuti. And as in so many cultures, as time went on, Kemet's Jehuti became known by the Greeks as Egypt's Thoth or Thoth, T-H-O-T-H. That's where we get the word thought from and the Greeks added him to their pantheon as Hermes Hermes and eventually he became known as the energy being Mercury in the Roman pantheon so the Romans looked to the Greeks and the Greeks looked to the Kemetians and the Kemetians also known by the Greeks as Egyptians credited Jehuti as the author of all works of science and religion and philosophy and magic and the Greeks further declared Jehuti the true author of every work, of every branch of knowledge, both human and divine. So as you can see, Brother Jehuti, he was a powerful energy being and life force on this planet. And over time, there developed a legend around Jehuti. And it is said that there exists an actual manuscript of Jehuti's teachings. And this codex became known by the Greeks as the Book of Thoth or the Book of Thoth. T-H-O-T-H. And legend has it that the manuscript was hidden, like so many other things were, in an ancient tomb in Saqqara in northern Egypt. And from the time this book of Toth was hidden, in those days, mythology tells us that the sacred teachings of Jehuti found in that codex have been handed down over the centuries from spiritual masters to hierophants to adepts to neophytes. From wise mouth to listening ears through blood, ancestral and cellular memory over and over across several continents and permeating many cultures time and again until this very day. We know that in the black community as the oral tradition, the oral tradition. In 1908, a study of the Hermetic philosophy of ancient Egypt and Greece was published by the Yogi Publication Society of a Masonic Temple in Chicago. And the authors of this book were listed under a pseudonym only as three initiates. Three initiates from a Masonic temple 
publishing the Hermetic Philosophy of Ancient Egypt in Greece. Now, remember, the Greeks knew Jehuti as Thoth and Hermes. This book is called The Kabbalion, K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N, The Kabbalion. Now, The Kabbalion presents seven hermetic principles, and they are, number one, the principle of mentalism. Number two, the principle of correspondence. Number three, the principle of vibration. Number four, the principle of polarity. Number five, the principle of rhythm. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. Number seven, the principle of gender. So mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. Now, if you dig deep enough in your research and in your study, you will also find manuscripts that attribute to Jehuti two additional principles. One, the principle of growth and creation, and two, the principle of breathing, growth and creation and breathing. So that would give us mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, gender, growth and creation and breathing. What is the number one way that human beings create? What is the number one way that human beings create? The number one way that human beings create is mentally through our thoughts, through our imagination. We think things into being. We create with our minds. We create our experience with our mind. Kemet's Jehuti became known by the Greeks as Egypt's Thoth or Thoth. T-H-O-T-H. That's where we get the word thought from. Jerome, one of the Christian fathers of the Catholic Church. St. Jerome wrote this. As often as this world's vain display delights you, as often as you see in life some empty glory, transport yourself in thought to paradise and begin to be now what you will be hereafter. St. Jerome. And this letter was written in 383 or 384 in our common era. Jerome wrote, as often as this world's vain display delights you, as often as you see in life some empty glory, transport yourself in thought to paradise and begin to be now what you will be hereafter. Kemet's Jehuti became known by the Greeks as Egypt's Thoth or Thoth, T-H-O-T-H. That's where we get the word thought from. 1973, Dr. Maxwell Maltz's book, The Search for Self-Respect. Page 74, Dr. Maltz writes, you build the caliber of your thinking. Those are some very important words put together in a very wise way right there. You build the caliber of your thinking. You build the caliber of your thinking. You build the caliber of your thinking, propelling your thoughts into and through your imagination. Then, with internal strength, you move toward your goals of fulfillment and happiness. You do this when, in your mind, you support yourself instead of undermining yourself. You do this when, in your mind, you develop your creative and imaginative powers instead of worrying about what other people think or foreseeing endless disasters and you must search for your creative powers that's a key phrase brothers and sisters you must search for your creative powers so that you can move toward them toward what toward your creative powers Kemet's Jehuti became known by the Greeks as Egypt's Thoth or Thoth T-H-O-T-H that's where we get the word thought from Ladies and gentlemen, Diana Ross. Okay, let me tell you this. My impression, I have a certain, uh, I guess, positive, positiveness about my life. But I realize that every time I create a, a positive thought in my mind, also I create a negative thought. It's just like, I'm going to be very successful. And my mind said, oh, no, you're not. You know? <laughs> okay? So since I create positive and negative, it's which one I give the most attention that is powerful. When I think positive constantly... It's very powerful and it controls me. If I think negative all the time, it's going to control me too. So right now, my positive thought is there is no go going to be no disaster to destroy what I have planned for me and my family. And if there is, that's life. 
you know, and I can accept what I get. My intention is for it to work and to be successful, and I will accept what I get. See, I don't have any choice about what my life is going to be like. The only choice I possibly might have is how I'm going to react to it.